In this video, we're going to cover the body and header sections of the design appearance page. I'll begin by clicking on body and opening up this section. In the layout section, you'll see we have two options, fixed and full. If I select full, you'll see that the background area of the page is eliminated. For this tutorial, I'm going to leave it on fixed so that we can dive further into the background section. In the background section under background color, you can click on the black square to the right and that will open up a color picker. Using the color picker, you can choose by clicking within this field a color for your background. To change the hue to other selections, you can slide up or down on this scale to the right until you're happy with the color that you've chosen. Additionally, if you know the hexadecimal value for the color you would like to use, you may just simply enter it here. To upload a background image for your page, simply click on Select File and choose a file from your local computer. Click Open. When the image loads, you'll have additional options. By clicking on Adjust underneath the thumbnail of the image, it'll open up the photo editor and it will allow you to do some minor photo editing to this image, which you can save and that will become the background of the page. Under the next section called Background Image Placement, you'll find four options, Cover, Contain, Repeat, and No Repeat. Depending on the size and quality of the image that you upload, you may be able to have that set to Tile under the Repeat section, um, or it may be a large enough image that you can use it to cover the entire page. It's going to depend on the image that you use as to which one of these options you'll want to use ultimately. Currently I'm set to contain. And contain means is that it's going to try to keep that image to the entire length of the page. So for example, if I make the page shorter, it's actually going to change how that's viewed on the page. I make this a cover image, it's going to try to shrink that image so that it fits within the size of the page. I'm going to select repeat and in my case here I'm going to change this to top center. And of course you have the ability to, to control the uh, repeatability of the horizontal and vertical. Again, a lot of this is going to depend on the image that you use for the background as to what settings you use in this section. So the best option here is just to upload an image and play with the settings. Next, we're going to close the body section and open the header section. In the header section, what we're referring to is the large area of space at the top of the page. We have four header sizes available, and if I hover over each one, we give you the exact pixel dimensions in case you're able to upload an image that is the exact size. In this tooltip, we give you some specific information as well. It's the uh, the same dimensions, but then also some information on if you happen to upload an image that is larger than the specified areas, that's perfectly fine because it will open in our photo editor 
and allow you to crop it to the specific dimensions. If I select a different header size, the page will automatically change and show you the size of how the header is laid out for the title as well as for the logo. You see that it's automatically resized as you go. For this tutorial, I'm going to select the medium size. For just a moment, I'm going to skip the background image and move down to background color. This is the same type of color picker that we went over up in the body section. And you also have the ability to simply type in a hexadecimal value if you have that from the body section so that it matches if you desire. This background color is most important if you're not going to be selecting a background image for the header area. If you plan on uploading a ping that has a transparent quality, you will also be able to see through part of your image to this background color. So now I'll go ahead and go back to the background image and select a file. I'm going to choose this particular file for my background. And once it's loaded, the photo editor will automatically open in the crop view at the same size as what you have previously selected for the image header. So I'm currently in the medium size. And this is going to allow me to move my crop around to exactly the size or the, I should say, the exact location that I want the image to be displayed. I can move it simply up and down or I can grab a corner and pull it in tighter if I wish. Additionally, if I decided that I wanted to go to a larger view, I could do so from this interface. And when I hit apply and save, it will automatically change in the layout settings. For now, I'm going to keep that medium size. I'm going to set my crop to this location, hit apply, and now save. Once it has saved, you'll see the image has automatically filled the header area. And if you wish to go in and make additional changes, simply come back down to the button that says adjust. You'll now see that you're able to go into the photo editor and use any number of the photo editing tools that are available. I'm not going to cover those in this tutorial but it's important to know that they are there in case you wish to edit the background image any further. I'm going to save and return to my original design. Now that you have an image uploaded to the header section, the tools next to the background image have slightly changed. Um, you have the ability to change the image by simply uploading a new file. You can adjust the image as we went over a few moments ago. You can remove the image completely or you can revert any changes that you've made. Additionally, a little bit further down here, we have some other settings for the image, the background image placement and the background image focus. If your image is going to cover the entire header, you won't need to worry about any of these settings. These are for images that may be smaller that you need to have, for example, stretch or repeat as a repeatable background in that section. Most of the time, you will be uploading an image that will cover the entire header and you should not have to worry about these settings. Before I move on in this presentation, I'm going to go ahead and click on Save Changes to be sure that all of the changes I've made have saved so far. 
And I'm also going to scroll back to the top and pull my browser in to show you how the header responds to a smaller layout. So this may be how it would be viewed on a tablet. And then once I've moved all the way into trigger the mobile navigation, you'll see the orange mobile header here. The mobile navigation is the section that we're going to discuss next. Okay, moving back down to the mobile navigation area, we notice that the background color was set to that orange and the icon color is set to white. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just reverse this. And that way you can see exactly how that looks up top if we had that reversed. Now when I scroll back up, you'll see that my navigation icons became orange. And when I squeeze the page back down, that's how they display on the white background. So you have complete control over the way that navigation displays as well. The next section is called Drop Shadow. I'm simply going to click on Drop Shadow here and scroll back to the top to see what I've turned on. And you'll see that below my navigation, as well as below the image, there is now a Drop Shadow effect on the screen. Let me turn that back off so that we can compare again. Turn it off. And the drop shadow effect that is under the header image is currently gone. Now for just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and turn the drop shadow back on. And I'm going to show you how you can play with the color of that drop shadow. I'm going to click on the color picker here. And I'm going to choose an, a color that will be easy to see so that you can just see that you are able to change the tint of the drop shadow. Additionally, you're able to change the drop shadow size by using that selector, this slide bar here. but I'm not going to use a drop shadow on mine at all. In the final section of this video, I'm going to cover the border setting. The border, and I'm just going to increase this for a moment, it's currently set to white. I'm going to increase that for a moment up to about 20, and we'll move back up and take a look at this. This line right here that is between the header image and the navigation is the border that we're speaking of. So if I wanted to change that color, I could do so with this color picker. And you can see that you have the availability to change that particular line. In my case for this design, I'm going to simply put that back to a size of one and white so that I'm able to have my simple line. If you wanted to turn it off, you can simply uncheck the border setting. Okay, that about does it for the body and header portion of this tutorial. As I close out this video, I do want to remind you that as you make changes, you should always click the Save Changes button as soon as you're ready to take those changes live, but also to make sure that you save the changes that you make before moving out and going to another page of the site. In our next video, we'll cover the titles and logo sections of the design appearance page.